praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. We praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You are welcome into his presence this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a joy for me again to come here at this pulpit. Every time I climb up here, it gives me a different joy. Amen. And I'm so excited about every one of you that is here today. Having been through the marathon one month of um, everything together, I want to thank the Lord for His strength, for His grace. Some of you call just blessing the name of the Lord for the program. Some of you call just thank you the Lord for the strength. As you know, whenever you have a guest, your program change, and uh, you have to run from one angle to the other to uh, meet your own appointments and the appointment of your guest. By the way, our pastor arrived safely, and he extend love greetings to the church in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad to have every one of us in here today. I'm going to make some people a little bit uncomfortable because I want to talk closely with you. Amen. Uh, closely with you. From, from grace. Um, by the way, um, from grace, can you just move forward to this side of the eye? Amen. From grace uh, to the back. Right up to Marie. Um, can you come to this side of the eye, please? Can just want us to be very close to one another. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That is a promotion for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The twins are not in here. What are they? Mama, Salah, Basa, Dolo, Bosente. We bless the name of the Lord. Um, I know this is going to get a little bit uh, so exciting at the end. So I, I better do this now that the atmosphere is calm. Amen. Amen. I want my two daughters to come. They are going back to school uh, after this service. Kelly and Vivek, can you come? And um, let me just say that we are proud of what you guys are doing in Ohio. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Um, they are ministering in a church there and uh, we've heard echoes about what God is using them to do in the music ministry. Amen. As you all know, um, these are our kids. We send them out there and we are glad when we have good reports. Amen. I want the church to stand up as we pray for them and they go back to school tomorrow, this afternoon after this service. That the Lord will take them safely and that the Lord will give them success and wisdom in everything that they are studying. May they come out of there with flying colors in the name of Jesus. Up your mouth and pray for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the adoration for your children. Lord, I know that you have a plan, a purpose for these children. I give you the praise, Lord Jesus. We give you the glory because you are awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Kelly's life. Thank you, Jesus for that which you are using them to do. Thank you for Vera's life. We bless your name for the caring attitude you have bestowed in her. We, 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 uh, we worship you, Lord, for them. And Father, we lift them up before your throne of grace that as they travel this afternoon back to school in Ohio. We ask, Lord, that you will go with them safely in the name of Jesus. And that, Father, you will protect them on their way. You will keep them on their way. And that you will arrive safely to find everything in good condition in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for their studies that they will come out their head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus, we declare that it is not about how much you study, it's about how much God has destined you to succeed. Therefore, we pray that as you spend time to study, may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding that you'll be able to reproduce when you are asked in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you because they will come back after two years and we will celebrate the graduation in the grand style. We thank you, Lord, for their mom, for the provisions, for the vision, and thank you for every talent in here, and thank you for all our students. We use this words as a point of contact to declare success in your exams. In the name of Jesus, as many that are going up taking exams right now, I speak success in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The twins are not yet here? We are here. Oh, okay. I thought you thought I was talking about Kelly and Billy. <laughs> I bring the twins. Yes. Yes. Amen. Give a mighty hand to the Lord. This is the first twin, the first pair of twins in this church. Amen. I expect for women leaders to stand behind you. I don't, I don't have women in this house. But let me see, what are you pointing at? I expect some women to gladly stand behind. Are you telling these are married people? That is, oh my goodness. Maleba Katalaba Sondo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, from today. From today, I don't care. Lord, listen to this now. From today, I don't care who is the uh, mother or uh, the father. I don't want to see no father and mother bring baby before this altar. The women are in charge. Yeah. When one of those children enter the church, we take care of them yeah. and give them some relief. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can the church stand? Let's bless his name yeah. for our first ever twin. I know there are more coming in the name of Jesus. Yeah.
and they shall come again from the land of thy enemy. And verse 17 says, And there is hope in the end, says the Lord, that that children shall come again to thy borders. Father, we ask Holy Spirit to speak to your people this morning. In a language they can understand you and wipe away every tear as you have said we should weep no more I declare that anyone that has been weeping in the past years in the past months in the past week today marks the end of the weeping in the name of Jesus Christ I speak and end your weeping this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Why would the Lord ask his people to weep no more? Why would the Lord sit from in heaven and look down on his people and declare that weep no more? It is because there is good news in Zion. Hallelujah. There is good news in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, the Lord says, Weep no more, for I will be gracious. Gracious means he will show grace and mercy. He will show you grace and mercy. For the things that you have been weeping about, for the things that you have been crying about, he will show you grace and what? And mercy. Grace and mercy simply talks about the fact that you are not qualified to earn what he is about to bless you with if things were going to be looked in the eyes of man, but because they are, they are looked in the eyes of God, he says, I will show you what? Grace and mercy. So therefore, do what? Weep no more. Weep no more. Weep no more. And the Lord has made me to understand that Weep no more concerning that sickness or disease. Because there is bound in Gilead. Oh my neighbor. I said, He says, concerning sickness or disease, weep no more, for I have bound in Gilead. There is healing in the house of God. Hallelujah. He says, concerning that pregnancy, concerning that womb, weep no more. Concerning that barrenness, weep no more. For God No more. 
He says, we no more for that job, Maria Baka. We no more for saying that unemployment. We no more for saying that unemployment. Because I'm not just ready to give you a job. I'm ready to give you a job that you'll be a manager. I'm not just about to give you a job. I'm about to make you a boss. I'm not just about to give you a job. I'm about to make you a, 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 a controller, a ruler.
the Lord has heard thy cry. Oh, yes, you didn't get it. It's a so window, Lord, because I, the Lord, has heard thy cry. Some of us, some of us didn't get that in the school yet. Open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. Maybe it will help you to get it in your spirit. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, second book in the Bible. And third chapter. And we're going to read verse 9 and 10 only. Verse 9 and 10 only. The Bible says there uh, <laughs> that uh, now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have seen the oppression wherein the Egyptians oppressed them. Your cry, my love, has reached the Almighty God. Your cry has reached the Almighty God. Your weeping has touched the throne of God. And the oppression in which the world system has oppressed you has reached and has touched the heart of God. And listen to his response. He says, don't forget, I have heard thy cry. Hello? Remember I said in number one, this is why should we know more that I have heard thy cry. He does not just hear our cry as what has to do now. Hello? He hears our cry and he moves as to what the solution is to be. And gives out the solution. Listen to what the verse 9 says. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. We are not dwelling on that because that one is going to be taken care of in another scripture. The issue I want you to hear and to get here is that every blessed moment in your life, whether at 12 midnight, whether at 3 a.m., whether at 5 a.m. in the morning, whether at midnight at dawn, as you weep at your cool corner, as you rise up and get yourself locked in that closet and you cry and you cry and the attitude of your crying even makes you to feel is anyone hearing me? God says as I now to you I heard your cry I heard your cry I have heard your cry therefore weep no more because I have heard your cry therefore weep no more because I have heard your cry Chapter 20. Second Kings chapter 20. Second Kings chapter 20. And we are going to read the five only. Listen to what the Bible says for you, Bible students. You know the story about Hezekiah's sin and how the Lord sent the prophet Isaiah to go and tell him he will show what? Hello? Even when the devil comes to announce the message of death to you. Listen to God's answer this morning. If you can do one thing, repent. Hello? You see, I discovered something of recent. That the, the, only, the only gateway to anointing is holiness. The gateway to anointing. I don't care whether you pray to the first seven. You can pray to the first seven and mess up your life in the next second. And when you do that, you just destroy the anointing. The gateway into God's abundance, into power, into the anointing of God is what? Holiness. I plead with you, my beloved, shun evil, shun sin. The Bible says, free, free from sin, free from sin, free right away from it. Because that is what will make you powerless. That's what will make you to be one that when you speak, it look like your prayer did not cross your feeling. But thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, but thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. The Bible says here, verse 5, it says, turn again. Hallelujah. And tell the Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thou says the Lord God of, the, of thy father David, I have heard thy prayers. 
I have, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody, the Bible said Hezekiah was living in sin. And the word of the prophet came unto him, set your house in order or else you die. <laughs> this is where spiritual maturity comes. When Ezekiah heard that, he said, I know what I've labored for the Lord. I know what seed I've planted in God. I know my God will not forsake me if I can turn my heart to Him again. And the Bible says, Ezekiah turned his face to the wall and wept all night. And wept. The Bible says, before the man of God who announced the message of death could get onto the outer court to get to the fence, to the gates. Because Hezekiah turned his face and cried out unto the Lord and said, God, have mercy. And said, God, no, I miss him, have mercy. Hear my cry, have mercy. Hear my cry, have mercy. The Bible says, the prophet did not go close to the gates. He said, go back again. God is sending a prophet back again to your life this morning. I said, God has sent a prophet back into your life this past month, this past week, even today. There is a prophet taking on to your life. No matter where you have missed it, no matter what has been going on, no matter how the devil has now turned on to you, no matter how the devil has now saved you, the word the Lord, from the Lord is coming to you is, go back again. He has heard that cry. He has heard that cry. Number one reason why he says, Weep no more. Because I have heard that he didn't cry. That he didn't see this. I have seen them. I have prayed. I have brought to you this morning deliverance. I have brought to you this morning. Oh, 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 healing. I brought to you this morning the ability to succeed. I brought to you this morning the ability to make it. I brought to you this morning. Therefore, we. No more. Second reason why the Lord says, I shall announce unto you, we no more. Because I have answered you. Bakaya lava so korea manda katea basata. I am the Lord, answer you. We no more because I have the Lord, answer you. I know you have been quiet because you are like, Pastor, if you answer me, <laughs> I understand this is what you are saying. Yeah, but if you answer me, why? Hello? Hello? Uh, is that what is running through your mind? If you have answered me, why am I? Why is this? Listen to why. Listen to why. The Bible says, listen to this. Listen to this. The manifestations of the Lord come in his due season. In fact, in fact, let, let me read Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, 24. Isaiah 65, 24. Kabo Lobo Sende Liba Katalabasa. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Isaiah 65, 24. And it shall come to pass. Somebody say, shall come to pass. It shall come to pass that before thy collect, before you call it, before you call it, I said before you call it, I will answer, not I shall answer. I do what I will answer. Before you call it, I will answer. I will and 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 and, and when that sorry verse 24 and it shall come to pass that before thou call it before you call it I will answer and while they are yet speaking 
the Lord um, 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 to demand for something. And the Bible says the same day that he went before the Lord, God did what? Dispatch angels. To do what? To give his answer. I said the same what? I said the same what? The same day. The same day. I don't want to go into the rest of the story because these days <laughs> your answer is not dispatched through angels any longer. And, and, and there are some priests or persons in the air that hinder angels. So God had another method. Uh -huh. And another method is dispatch your answer through the power of the Holy Ghost that is unstoppable. Amen. church when you left your house to come to church if somebody called your house and somebody was home they would say she is gone to church hello is that not true and while you are on your way to church somebody called the church is pastor already in church and somebody pick up for no he is not yet in church what does that mean I am where? I am where? I am where? Oh Lord, I thought somebody caught it. The answer is on the way. I thought somebody caught it. That the answer left her and is on the way to you. The fact that you are still waiting does not mean God has no answer. The fact that you are waiting means the answer is on the way. Leave no more. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Psalm 51 verse 15. Oh, sorry, Psalm 91 verse 15. You shall call on me and I will answer. I found that you somebody do something. You will call on me and there is a persuasion here. God is persuaded by the fact that anytime you call, there is bound to be an answer. Why? Because you are of the kingdom. You are not ordinary. So why are your answer is on the way? <laughs> the devil can make you feel the answer is not. Hello? There is a scurrying devil out there. Hello? I said there is a scurrying devil out there. I pray that from this day you are going to to your spirit, not to hear the discouragements of the devil concerning every word that the man has spoken in your life, concerning every prophecy, concerning every revelation, concerning every prayer. You are not going to, to allow the devil to contradict that word, but you are going to start on the word of God to believe that I know, I know, and I know, and I know, and I'm persuaded in my spirit that even if I see it like Hezekiah, he has answered me and has told me. And I said about my liquidity, and yet he will answer me in two seasons. That even though I waited for my answer, that doesn't mean that my answer has not yet been dispatched. That doesn't mean that my answer has not yet been given. It has been given. You just need to wait for it to come. Wait for it to come. 
I wait for you to come. I said, wait for you to come. As we are speaking, the Lord is telling me to minister to you next week on how to win on him. Yeah, because people don't know how to wait. Amen. Hallelujah. We will be touching on how to wait on him for your answer. You can say, wait to wait on God for your answer. Praise the name of the Lord. Take point. We no more. Why? Oh God. <laughs> hey Jesus, I love this. Lord, we no more. Why? The Lord said, We no more, my beloved. For I will fight for you. Let I will do what? I will do what? I will do what? I will do what? You have fought long enough. You have been struggling long enough. I must come that God says you retire from the battle, Amen. retire from the war front. This is now my battle. Amen. This is now my battle. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Up your Bible to Exodus 14 14. Exodus 14 14. The Bible says, Tell the children of Omega, Makala Basse, is it like the Bible? Hello? Tell the children of America that they stand still and see the great salvation of the Lord. For I will fight. For I will fight. I will do what? I still that is not enough. And also the people are like, mm -hmm. why is the battle still fierce? If God is fighting for Listen to Second Chronicles. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 17. Second Chronicles 20, 17. It says, from now. Everybody say from now. From now. The battle is no more yours. Ah. Oh Lord. It says from now. The battle is no more you are. Second Chronicles chapter 2017. Do you have that in your Bible? Yeah. Oh Lord. He said the battle from this moment is not yet your battle. It's not more your battle. It is my battle for I will fight for you. Now, that answers if you are still fighting. Means you have not made the battle the Lord's battle. <laughs> Hello? This is very spiritual and this is very profound. If you are still fighting, you are battling by yourself. God is saying it is because you have not yet made him my battle. How do you make the battle of how do you make your battle the battle of the Lord? By resting in God. Rest in God. Rest in God. Rest in God. Rest in God. Paul and Salah were locked in prison jail. They make all the noise. And the jails were open. But when Peter alone were locked in the jail, he rest. <laughs> Learn to rest. He slept. Hello? He rested in God. And that night, the angel came and said, Ah, you are rested in Lord. Come, let's go. May it be a moment in your life that the angels of God who wake you up from your sleep and say, You are ready for love. Come, let's go out of this dungeon. Come, let's go out of this prison. Come, let's go out of this life. May the God of heaven begin to despise and to you because you are ready for love in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are still fighting, you are not yet having a battle for the Lord to love. He shall not need to fight in this battle any longer. I say what? I say what? There are more testimonies coming in this church that will blow the minds of people. I say there are more testimonies in this church that are in the hidden. And they are soon coming out. You know, there are some testimonies that whether you testify or not, you cannot hide it. 
I declare that my son's testimony be a push of this morning. May that day's testimony be a push of this morning. In the name of Jesus. And finally, <laughs> I love this. In fact, I was able to close with this one if I didn't have time. But now that I have some five more minutes, let me close with this final one. Amen. Number four, reason why the Lord said weep no more. In fact, let me share this testimony. On Thursday, I was sitting in my office and a uh, white guy drove in and I think this guy from India actually. I knocked at the door and I came out and I talked to him and uh, he said something to me. He said, we are so happy with this church. I, I was amazed. I said, it's an Indian. I don't know whether it's a Christian or what. He said, but we are so happy because before you came to build in this place, this neighborhood was known as a rough area. He said, this building has brought light. Now, this is an unbelievable. Now, this is an infidel talking about his physical light. Or he's talking about physical light. He said, this building has brought light into this neighborhood. I am the owner of the apartment complex opposite this one, on the other side of the road. I said, so what can I do for you, sir? He said, I want to let you know that I want to contribute to the church in my own way. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. God for Jesus. Thank God for the impact your life is causing in this place with the neighborhood. He said, being the owner of the apartment complex, if you have anybody in church that needs a place to stay, come talk to me. Are you hearing me? You know, I, I, I thought him. I thought he came to advertise his business when he said that. Then he said this clause. He said, I'm not interested in the money. I'm interested in having good people live in my apartment. So, listen to the apartment. So, I can work with them whatever they can afford. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? He can work with whatever the good people can afford. Means he's not going to go by the standard of the rent that department or whatever the friends there is for you. I declare that that favor, that favor, this kind of abundance of favor that is coming into this place will locate somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not be passed by the favor of God. That is favor. That is favor. That is favor. So we don't need to have anybody who is looking for a place to stay anymore. In fact, we have a detailed meeting this Thursday. A detailed meeting this Thursday. Again. That is the hard work of God. I see that the hard work of God. Uh, uh, I know that is not enough. The other day, I stumbled into the African store right here. I went to buy uh, something to eat. And when I got there, the man had spoken to one of our members and said, Tell your pastor to come and see me. And I said, yeah, you talk to one of my members that I should come and see you. He said, are you the pastor? I said, yes. He said, okay. Please, so, I know what it means to sow in the house of God. Even if you don't see me, I want you to know that any time you have any form of celebration, any form of event, tell me, I can supply anything from my story to get my blessing. I can supply you anything from my store here to get my own because we are glad with the church that has come to bring light in the neighborhood. That favor is your favor. I say that favor is your favor. And the fourth one the Bible says, God said, we no more for I have overcome the world for you. For you have overcome. You have overcome. In the midst of any trials, in the midst of any difficulties, we not, for I have overcome the world for you. The fact that I am no more in the grave is the fact that you have overcome. The fact that the grave cannot hold me down. Tell 
16, verse 33. Rise up on your feet as we read that scripture as I will, and as we pray. God says, God says, you have overcome, you have overcome, you have overcome, you have overcome. We no more because you have overcome. Any trial that still want to come your way, you have overcome. We no more, we no more, we no more for you have overcome. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible says what then? The Bible says what? In this world, you will have what? Tribulations and what? And try to be of what? Of good shares for what? I have what? Overcome the world for you. Every trouble of your life, the Lord says, I'm going to come there. Every difficulty of your life, raise up your hands and begin to worship Him. Raise up your hands and begin to worship Him. Raise up your hands and begin to worship Him. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor for the spirit of our Makama that you are giving us this day. This day will soon win no more. I will win no more. I will win no more. Win no more, my beloved. Whatever the need in your life, win no more. Whatever the situation, win no more. The Holy Ghost is here to visit you. Rabakaya will show to Lolo Sit. Matale will Satayala Baba Sit. Win no more. Win no more. Win no more. For the Holy Ghost is set to visit you. Whatever they need in our life, raise up your hands to heaven. Begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Because the windows of heaven are open right now. The Lord is willing to reign upon your life. 